I'm sorry. What can I do? You can keep it real with me. I'm keeping it real with I you right you. now. I married you. Oh, he's I mad. saw that. I yeah, saw that. He's yeah, he's mad. I can just tell when he's mad. Rob is losing his mind because Callum and Sophie went on a few dates when they were 14 or 15. Honestly, it's kind of embarrassing. His reaction to this situation is so disproportionate that it's making me wonder whether he's deliberately trying to guilt trip Sophie. Is he just acting up? Is he making a big deal of this in order to manipulate Sophie and milk his opportunity? I'm sorry. No, you're not. You're just sorry that it all came out like this. You just was hoping to slide by and, and, and get this one over on me. Rob's the master of always trying to make himself the ultimate victim. His playbook is to always try and get Sophie to feel sorry for him. But before we dive into that, let's start at the beginning. So the last we saw the pair, Rob had just learned that Sophie and her friend Callum did at one point date. And while I understand that that came as a shock, Sophie should have been honest about it. At the same time, Rob is taking this opportunity to act like the biggest drama queen in the world. This is the literal definition of making a mountain out of a molehill. If Sophie had told me from the beginning that her and Callum dated briefly when they were 13, 14 years old, you know, nothing happened and they'd just been best friends ever since, I probably would have had a different reaction. No, you would not have, Rob. If Sophie were to have mentioned it earlier, I'm willing to bet that he would have just refused to have gone. That probably explains why she left it out. Now, again, should she have done that? No, absolutely not. But was she a child when they dated? Yes, she was 14 years old. This was a school ground relationship. It wasn't serious. It didn't mean anything. But Rob's out here acting like, I don't know, like, like Sophie cheated on him or something. But need I remind you, the only cheating in this relationship has been by him. To me, it was like an irrelevant, we've been friends how long? 10, 11, 12, it's I don't know. Irrelevant. More than a decade. It's not irrelevant. I'm not allowed to have any feelings. I'm you just are. supposed to accept you everything. You are allowed to have feelings completely. Clearly not. Now, Sophie's trying to explain that out of 12 years of friendship, her and Callum went on a couple of dates over the span of a month. It really wasn't serious. But Rob is busy trying to manipulate what Sophie's saying in order to try and make himself look like more of a victim. Like, keep in mind that Sophie hasn't said to him that he can't have feelings. She hasn't even said to him that he's overreacting, even though he blatantly is. I'm sorry. What can I do? You can keep it real with me. I'm keeping it real with I you right you. now. I married you. Oh, oh he's I mad. saw that. I yeah, saw that. Yeah, he's mad. I can just tell when he's mad. Sophie apologizes repeatedly. She's not sure what she can do to salvage this situation. Now, she admits that she should have told her husband, but she also says, and she tries to justify her omission by saying that they've been fighting. So it's not exactly like they've been having lots of big or in-depth conversations, but their raised voices are causing a commotion. Sophie's friends are concerned about her. So Callum walks over to check on the situation. I need to work some out with her. Yeah, it just seemed like it was getting a bit heated. I just want to make sure everything's good. He thinks we're exes. We're not really even exes, right? It's yeah, barely I mean, anything. Yeah, I wouldn't even go as far as exes. Yeah, here's the thing, right? Callum is literally the last person in the world that Rob wants to see right now. Callum must know that. In fact, I get the sense that he's enjoying stirring up all of this drama. Like, he's the one that needlessly dropped into the conversation that he and Sophie used to date. There was no need for him to have done that. But just look at the grin on his face as he was watching Sophie and Rob argue before he walked over. Yeah, he's definitely enjoying this. But the same can't be said for Rob. In fact, it's in Callum's presence that Rob admits why he's so angry. My ex ended up with her male best friend. So she knows that I already have a thing about that. Yeah. And then here you are. You're her male best friend. Didn't know you guys dated. Now, Rob is definitely still absolutely overreacting. 
But the fact that this stems from a trauma, the trauma of an ex-girlfriend leaving him for her best friend, does kind of make this make a little bit more sense. Just a bit. And after he dismisses Callum, it seems like the penny finally drops for Sophie. She begins to realise that this issue of Rob's is more serious than she originally thought. In fact, she begins to see Rob as the victim that he sees himself as. I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't think about it from your side, I'm sorry. Sophie's knowingly chosen to marry a giant baby, so she needs to now just accept the fact that Rob's been triggered and he's acting out. But remember, because of her past, this caretaker role is something that Sophie's very used to. It's something that she slots into naturally. So now that Rob's established himself as the victim, Sophie's demeanour has changed. She's caved into Rob. She's cuddling him. She's pacifying him. And she's doing her utmost to try and make him feel better. I'm sorry. No, you're not. You're just sorry that it all came out like this. You just was hoping to slide by and, and, and get this one over on me. Rob's insane. Instead of accepting that this was a mistake by Sophie, he's choosing to twist it in his mind and see Sophie as this evil manipulative villain. He's having this huge pity party, and the guest list consists of him and only him. It's a one-man party, but he better be careful, because I was right. Callum is enjoying this a little too much. I think Sophie needs to be the one a bit more confident in herself. But, I mean, if she said she wanted to date again, um, I mean, I definitely wouldn't say no. Oh, Callum, you've just painted yourself as a snake, mate. That's a really slippery, snaky thing that you've just said. I mean, those hidden motives are precisely why Rob doesn't want Sophie to have a male best friend. That's why he'll never trust Callum. Callum's just proven himself to be untrustworthy. He's a troublemaker. You wouldn't want someone like that hanging around your wife. But here's the thing. Sophie is an attractive girl. If Rob's going to have a problem with every single guy in her life that's attracted to her, well, then he's going to be living a hellish existence. He has no control over whether or not men are attracted to Sophie. Men will be attracted to her. He's just going to have to live with it. But again, this whole victim mentality is exactly what Rob wants. He seems addicted to this feeling that life is out to get him. The world is somehow against him. Y'all have fun. I'm going home. What can I do? Nothing. You've already done it. Everything that Rob has said to Sophie could also directly apply to when he cheated on her. Like, Sophie couldn't accept his apology at face value, and in that moment, there wasn't anything that he could do in order to make it better. But at least Sophie didn't cheat. Her mistake, what she's guilty of, is omitting the truth. And while that isn't right by any means, it's a massive overreaction to be acting the way he is, to be acting as if she's burned their relationship to the ground. But somehow, Sophie is starting to believe it. I wanted last night to be like, just rob me and all my other favorite people and like everyone gonna have a good time. And it just didn't really go how I expected it to go. I kind of up. Sophie, listen to me carefully. You are in a toxic relationship. You're never going to be able to have a normal outing with your friends. Why? Well, for a start, none of your friends or family like Rob. But beyond that, if you're hanging out with girls, Rob's going to think you're cheating on him. And if you're hanging out with guys, Rob's not going to like that either. Rob's very skilled at manipulating the narrative. In fact, he's even managed to convince Sophie that his reaction last night was totally warranted. So much so that Sophie has now decided she can't be friends with Callum anymore. I can't really be friends with guys I used to date. And I know with us it's different. You're not just a guy I used to date. You can't just cut me out of your life. We're married, you know, so I have to respect how he feels too. Now, is it a bad thing that Callum, the guy that would gladly date her again, if given the chance, is being cut out of her life? Well, no, it's not. I actually side with Rob here. 
as I say, Callum has proven himself to be a troublemaker. His presence is definitely no good for Rob and Sophie's marriage. But, and there is a big but here, while Callum seems like bad news, I really hope this doesn't set a precedent. I hope that because she's done it once, Sophie doesn't now start isolating herself from other friends and family that Rob also doesn't like. That would be a huge red flag. What's crazy here is that the whole dynamic has now totally changed. In the space of just one episode, we've gone from Rob trying to win back Sophie to now Sophie desperately trying to win back Rob. She's organised a meeting tonight with her husband to tell him she's cut Callum out of her life. She wants to show him she's desperate for his forgiveness. Sophie. Hello. You doing good? Yeah, I wouldn't say I'm good. Look at his whole demeanour, look how mopey he is. He's such a crybaby, he's such a downer, isn't he? He's always feeling so sorry for himself. But Rob, you really need to get things in perspective. You're overreacting about a relationship she had when she was a child. He really seems so determined to make this a big thing. I'm still salty as hell about last night. So she really needs to do something very quickly to uh, make it up to me if she thinks this relationship's gonna work. Sophie tries to apologize again, but Rob is determined to milk this for all it's worth. It's one of the only times that he's had something to hold over Sophie's head. And oh boy, he's gonna hold it. Now, Rob's the one that's been in the doghouse for most of this relationship. He's really enjoying being on top for once. But what's he hoping to get out of this? What's his end goal here? Because it's starting to feel like he's vying for something very specific. Sometimes it's hard to believe that you really consider me. I do consider you. I want to believe you, I just don't know if I feel it. It's laughable at this point. Like, do you think Sophie felt considered when she found the numerous explicit videos that he'd requested from random women online? Yeah, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say no she did not. Frankly, in under 24 hours, Sophie has taken more steps to make it up to Rob than Rob has to make it up to Sophie in over two and a half months. She's ended her oldest friendship, whereas Rob, by comparison, gave her a list of things that she needs to change about herself, some sh**ty flowers that pricked her, and a poem that gave him the opportunity to perform like he always does. So I've already, you know, talked to Callum and I've already said that, like, I obviously respect you and I prioritise you over my friends, over anyone else. So you're more important to me, so I feel like that should show you. Yeah, that's what Rob wants to hear. He wants to hear that his wife will put him above everything else in this world. Really healthy, isn't it? He tells Sophie that for the first time he's felt hope in their relationship. He tells her that he can't do this alone. He loves her, <laughs> and Sophie is too far gone. She's unfortunately unable to see the hypocrisy in anything that he does. I'm here with you and I'm also trying. Then, when are you coming home? Tomorrow. This, this is it. This is exactly what Rob has been angling for this entire time. He's been very open about it. He's been honest that his priority has always been to get Sophie back in the apartment. In fact, that seems to be a much higher priority than actually trying to fix their problems. Even if we have problems, she should be at home working on these problems with me. We should be finding ways to get over them. We're married. So you'll be sleeping at the house tomorrow night? Yeah. You will see. All right. That's all I've been wanting. This explains his manipulative behaviour. 
This explains why he's been blowing this whole relationship with Callum out of all proportion. He's been milking it. He's been manipulating the situation to get what he wants. But the question is, is that also really what Sophie wants? Have the problems that caused her to leave in the first place now all magically just resolved themselves? Or, as seems much more likely, is she agreeing to come back out of a sense of guilt? Has she just been manipulated by Rob? Ultimately, the night was successful. We got somewhere. And now she says she's coming home. And uh, I think that makes for a good night. Rob counts this as successful. He says they're actually getting somewhere. Why? Well, because he's managed to get what he wants. He has managed to get his wife to grovel and apologise to him. He's managed to get his wife to cut off a lifelong friend. But stop and ask yourself this. What exactly has Sophie got out of this? I mean, <laughs> she's moving back in with a cheating husband who still hasn't really taken any accountability for what he's done, who still doesn't seem to have changed his ways. How on earth is that fair?